it's almost there. Hello, Grant. You want those 10,000 subscribers? What do I have to do? You only have to do one thing. Kill the Flash. Welcome to Film Learning, the show dedicated to learning you some filmmaking and learning you good. And as you all know, and reminded me like 900 times, the second season of The Flash is here, and there's a new villain in town. So of course, there's a new request in town. Zui Fung Do asked, Hi, can you do a tutorial for the lightning that's on Zoom in Season 2, Episode 2 of The Flash? You know what? I sure can. Now, I know a lot of you might be thinking, oh, it's just like the reverse flash effect with some new eyes and lightning, Grant. Well, that might be true, but here at Film Learning, we're not adverse to taking an old effect and putting a new spin on it, especially when the final result looks really cool. Now, time for this week's shoutouts to some bad music. <laughs> to complete this effect, you need to shoot your actor being all zoomy like. I don't have a suit, so I just made do with a ski mask. You'll also need to grab the download pack that contains our lightning sparks. To After Effects! <laughs> okay gang, here we are for the 25th time this season. As you can see, I have my shots set up in a comp and ready to go. So our first step is to track our eyeballs so we can add those freaky zoom eyes into our shot. So let's do that. So you may have noticed that in my footage, not only is it dark, but I also tilt my head. These are two things that I don't recommend you do if you want to make your shot easier. But since I did them, I'll show you how to track it. Let's begin by heading up to layer, adding a new null, and then we'll call it eyes. Now before we start tracking, if you can't see this tracker section here, head up to window and click tracker. All done. So let's start by selecting our footage, heading over to Tracker and click Track Motion. Only this time, we're going to also select Rotation. And just because I know it works, I'm going to select these tiny white dots on each of my eyes and then hit the play button. Now like I said before, unless you tilt your head like me, you probably won't need the Rotation Tracker and you can just get away with a single position track. Okay, that's all done and it looks pretty good. We'll then hit Edit Target, select our Null, hit OK, Apply and OK once more. Now that we have our eyes tracked, it's time to make our eyeballs. So let's head up to layer, add a new solid and call it eyeballs. We'll then stay up there, head to effect, noise and grain and add ourselves a fractal noise. Time to change some settings. You want to change the type to dynamic progressive, check invert, bump that contrast up to over 300 and the brightness to 25. I'm also going to up the complexity to 8 and drop down those sub settings. I'll change the sub influence to 105 and the sub scaling to 62. As you can see, it's made this veiny kind of substructure that's going to represent our zoom eyes. Our last step in building this is to hit the stopwatch on evolution, head to the end of the comp and set it to around 165. This gives it a subtle bit of movement without it going all nuts on us. Because let's face it, I mean, who wants nuts in their eyes? Okay, bad jokes aside, let's move on. Let's turn that layer off. Grab the pen tool and we're going to draw a mask around each eye. You can make these masks the exact size of your eye or make them a little bigger like me. It's completely up to you. When you're done, turn the layer back on. Hit F and feather them out anywhere from 7 to 10 pixels based on your shot. Remember, if you decide you want them a little bigger or smaller, you can always play with the mask expansion here instead of starting over. From there, let's remove that black from our eyeballs. Let's head up to Effect, Color Correction and add a tint. And all we have to do here is grab the color picker on the black and change it to a blue and BAM! The black is no more. Now our substructure here is still awfully harsh, so let's soften it up a little bit. Let's head up to Effect, Blur and Sharpen and grab a fast blur. And we're just going to up the blurriness to 1, just to take that edge off. Much better. We'll now grab the pick whip and parent this to our null. And we'll also change the transfer mode to add. We'll then turn on motion blur for the comp and the layer and see how it looks. Not bad, but we still have a ways to go, people. Our next step is giving a little light burst to our eyes to sell the illusion that they're projecting light. To do this, let's select our eyeball layer, duplicate it, control D, change the transfer mode to screen, there we go. And then we'll head up to effect, 
generate and add a CC light burst. Let's start by changing the center point to just above our nose. We'll then change the intensity to anywhere from 110 to 130, the ray length to 185. We'll then check set color and change this bad boy to a nice blue. As you can see from the preview, we now have a sweet bit of light burst projecting from our eyes. And that, boys and girls, is our eyes all done. Next up is our lightning. This is a tough one because it's totally individual to how much or how little lightning you have in your shot. Basically, this is how I've set up the lightning. Each flash of lightning isn't an animated lightning light. It's just a still I've made playing around in the advanced lightning effect. I've then rendered them out as a Photoshop file. I've done it this way because Zoom's lightning is never in the same place for more than one frame. So the idea here is to zoom in like so, so that we can only see one frame at a time on our timeline. We'll then open up our lightning stills come from the download pack, which contains single frames of about eight different lightnings. I'll grab say five different ones of those, copy them, jump back to our original comp and paste them into our shot. I can then position each one exactly where I want, scale them up or down if need be, and once I'm happy, I can move on to the next frame. We'll then rinse and repeat this process for roughly seven frames. We can then skip ahead seven or eight frames and do the same thing once again. I ended up doing this roughly three times for this shot and the end result should look like this. Once you've made that lightning, it's time to group it all together. So let's highlight all of those Photoshop stills, right click and hit pre-compose. I'll call this lightning, if I can spell it right. And now as we can see, all of our lightning is tidy, so we only have to add effects to one comp. The first step here is to open that comp, add a new adjustment layer, we'll then head over to presets and add Video Copilot's Lightsaber Glow preset. We'll then change the color to a more subtle blue. And that's nice. Let's now head back to that original comp and change the transfer mode to add. Our last step here with our lightning is to duplicate that comp, head up to effect, blur and sharpen and add a fast blur. Now all we're going to do here is crank that blur amount up to 20 or so. As you can see, it gives a little bit of a blowout and really sells that bright glow of the lightning. Our last step here of course is to add our signature reverse flash blur. So let's head up, grab an adjustment layer, we'll then stay up, grab that pen tool and let's draw a mask around our actor like so. It's not too detailed, but you know, close enough to the body that it looks passable. And then we'll then hit F and feather it out around 12 pixels. We'll then collapse down the mask menu and hit the stopwatch on mask path. Since our actor isn't moving a hell of a lot, we don't have to go frame by frame. I of course tilted my head, so I'm going to animate the mask points around my head to compensate for that. Once your animation is done, let's drag that adjustment layer below our lightning layer so it won't affect it once we add our blur. Let's now head up to effect, blur and sharpen and add a box blur. You know the deal here guys. Set the blur dimensions to horizontal, set this amount from anywhere to 10 to 25 and the iterations to eight. We'll then hit the alt key and type this expression, wiggle, space, bracket, 20, comma, five and end bracket. Click off the expression and bam. If we check out a preview, I would have to say that is done. Add up all those steps and you'll get something like this. Ooh, it's almost there. Hello, Grant. You want those 10,000 subscribers? What do I have to do? You only have to do one thing. Kill the Flash. So that's my take on the zoom effect. As I said earlier, it doesn't differ too much from our reverse flash effect in terms of the blurring, but the addition of that wild lightning makes all the difference. And not to mention those eyes. Those horrible eyes. But thankfully, that's my time guys. If you enjoyed the video, please like and share it. If you're new here, give that subscribe button a slap a hand. You can also hit me up on that dare social media by joining me on Facebook and Twitter. Hey, this is my brother's bro, and until next time, keep learning!